mean, surprisingly enough, apart from Norse mythology, uh, the Marvel Disney Plus show Loki has one more thing, at least, so far in common with history. And you may be thinking, well, what? And it's actually kind of has to do with American revolutionary history. Now, you may be really confused, and honestly, I don't know if I'm just kidding myself, but I thought it was really interesting, so... In the show, you don't need to know this, but um, there's some characters that form part of this organization, and these characters, which kind of act like little soldiers, they're called Minutemen. Now, that name, if you know anything about American Revolutionary History, will immediately ring a bell. And that's because Minutemen were extremely important in the American Revolutionary War, and but also in other types of conflict, but they're most famous for their role in the American Revolutionary War. So that's kind of a quick link I found between Loki and American Revolutionary History. So yeah, let's, let's get started. So, well, today, I mean, you can use, like, you've probably heard the, the word militia. And it's kind of the same thing as Minutemen, they're kind of like interrelated. But back then, um, back then I mean 18th century, you know, when the whole revolution happened, well, there was a difference. So, militia, well, it used to be people with, with weapons who just went from town to town to try and protect it from invasion and from others trying to take advantage of a poor situation. Because, you know, there was a war. Um, Minimum, however, they were kind of a special force. Um, yeah, like especially selected group of people, which would essentially just be able to quickly assemble, move fast, and be ready, be ready in a minute. That is why they're called Minutemen, because they should be able to... If, if, Within a minute's notice, be ready for whatever. And they were usually around, I'm guessing, I mean, the minimum, there was not really minimum, but 16, 18 years to maximum 25 years of age. And, well, they had to be strong, they had to be resilient, they had to be enthusiastic, patriotic, you know, really the... The characteristics you'd expect from the set of people, elite groups of military. And, well, they were technically not under the militia, but one quarter of the men in the militia were Minutemen. And so the Minutemen will be the first ones to jump into battle, then there will be the rest of the militia, and then like the main arm. So, um, well, the Minutemen, like I said, they're not just from the Revolutionary War. They they all go way back to the 17th century, 1645. Well, I mean, that year, uh, if you know anything about English or Scottish history, which I think is where it's coming from, um, that is the 45, the Rebellion of 45, the Jacobite invasion, well, invasion, sorry, rebellion with Bonnie Prince Charles and James III of England against George II. So, yeah. And they were just picked from the ranks and uh, be dressed with like special stuff. And I mean, they were generally were already around 30 minutes, like they were born 30 minutes and they had to be completely ready 30 minutes after that. But they technically should be ready to make notice. And then in 1689, so... I mean, this is mostly in England and the colonies. Um, but 1689, that is a year after the Glorious Revolution in England, with, which replaced... No, oh, that's... What am I saying? The 1645 thing, I've jumped the gun. Uh, that is 1745. That is 1745, not 1645. Yeah. So I'm sorry, uh, whatever I said, 1645, uh, that is the English Civil War. Uh, that is 100 years off. But yeah, 1645, 
uh, English Civil War, um, well, third one, I think it's the third one, well, it's the English Civil War, anyway, nothing to do with the 45 Rebellion, literally nothing to do, my mistake. So then in the 1689, which was another instance in which it was used, is a year after the Glorious Revolution, in which, you know, William III and Mary II of England kind of throughout James II of England, who would go into exile and would have a son, would would have a son, and that would be James III and Bonnie Prince Charlie, who would go on to be in the 45 Rebellion. But that's not important. Just forget about that. Um, yeah, so as I say, you know, like I said, new type of Minutemen came into existence. That's why this date is important. And these are called snowshoemen. And they were just giving snowshoes, giving stuff so they could be literally be ready at a moment's notice. If they said, hey, you need it like right now, you had to be ready in a minute. Well, not exactly a minute, but you know. Then in the whole French and Indian War, which, by the way, started by George Washington, FYI, um, they were kind of important there. And, well, India, by the time the revolution came around, the American Revolution, there had been quite a few rounds of Minutemen. Like, it was not the first time they were there. So, they ha their roles were quite defined. And each individual colony, um, they had their own like a section of Minutemen. Massachusetts obviously had their own, like, I think they were there for like six generations prior to that, so that was cool. And then, um, well, because of the whole nature of the war with the, with the Native American uprisings and with the whole France fiasco, um, they needed this kind of organization. So Minutemen really did prove useful. And yeah, and it was just, it was useful because they were ready at a moment's notice and they were prepared and it, they really, really helped. Well, in the world. However, I've mentioned all the good stuff about the Minutemen, but there was so there were obviously several downsides. The main one being that they had no no leader. Like I'm saying, like a lot. Sorry, um, they didn't have a central figure to lead them. Not unlike I mean, the the Continental Army. They had George Washington. The British Army had people like General Howe. Well, Admiral Howe. Sorry. Um, they had captains, military commanders, and obviously central leaders. The British had King George uh, III and Americans, George Washington. But the Minutemen had nothing like this. They had some small leadership like, scattered around, but no central leader. And, well, in February of 1775, Concord was the first city to actually create a stable Minutemen company. And these are 400 men. Not too bad, not too bad. And, well, they went into battle and not long after they were formed. And they were quite effective. Like, honestly, I mean, they should be. That's a military idea. They're really good. I would hate to be one of those Minutemen, but as a military idea, quite good, quite successful. And, well, they would just have to, like, they would go out to form an army and they would even um, fight at Bunker's Hill, one of the most famous battles of the whole war. Well, they were really well organized and all they did like central leadership. They kind of worked better than other branches of the Continental Army, which were had a central leader. But yeah, it's with these men that the American Revolution was able to be 
so successful for the revolutionaries. And they weren't necessarily ready at the moment, so it's in a minute's notice. But I think if there was more organization, it would have been even more effective, and the war would have lasted for less. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't have anything else to say. A minute, man. Then I still think about Loki at the beginning, not really relevant just because there's a there is characters called the Minutemen, and I thought I'd make a video on the Minutemen, but like the actual history ones. And yeah, sorry for the whole confusion. So 1645, that's mid English Civil War. 1745, that is the 45th Rebellion. I got it wrong. So yeah, that is it. That is all I have to say on the Minutemen. Yeah, I hope, hope, hope you liked it, I hope you found it interesting, and yeah, thank you for watching. Bye!